In this presentation, we will take a look at classical variable sampling. Within classical variable sampling, normal distribution theory is used to evaluate the characteristics of a population based on sample data. Auditors generally use classical variable sampling to estimate the size of misstatements. So we're going to estimate the size of a misstatement typically with the use of classical variable sampling or when classical variable sampling is applied, it's typically used to estimate the size of misstatement. Sampling distributions are formed by plotting the projected misstatements yielded by an infinite number of audit samples of the same size taken from the same underlying population. So this is going to be our standard distribution type curve that we would expect to see. If we have a larger population, the curve will typically tend to a shape more like this. If we have a small, uh, if we have a small sample, then we'll typically have a curve a curve that will look similar to this obviously the larger sample giving us more precise data around the mean which would be uh, right here a sampling distribution permits us to estimate the probability of observing a single sample result the sample mean is the best estimate of the population mean so here's the population mean and then we could use basically statistical theory a sampling distribution permits us to estimate the probability so we can estimate the probability using our standard deviation methods of observing any single uh, sample result so we can consider what the single sample result would be or what's the probability of a sample result to occur now we're going to take a look at advantages of the use of classical variable sampling we're going to be comparing and contrasting as we consider the advantages you're thinking of comparing it to the monetary unit sampling so this method will result in a smaller sample size than monetary unit sampling when the auditor expects a relatively large number of differences between book and audited value so remember our goal typically we would like to have a smaller sample size because that means less work for us, less actual testing for us. So this method will result in a smaller sample size. So hopefully we get good results with a smaller sample size than MUS, monetary unit sampling, when the auditor expects a relatively large number of differences between book and audited values. The techniques will work well for both overstatements and understatements, as opposed to monetary unit sampling and the selection of zero balances generally does not require special uh, sample design considerations and again that was one of the problems with the monetary unit sampling not a problem here with the zero balances classical variable sampling disadvantages some of the problems with classical variable sampling when little or no misstatement is expected it does not work well so if we're going to have little to no uh, misstatement this design isn't going to be working well for us to determine sample size, the auditor must estimate the standard deviation of the audit differences. So we have to include then an estimate. And any time we include an estimate, we, we increase the complication or the likelihood of, a, of some type of problem as a result from it. Uh, if few misstatements are detected in the sample data, so we have few misstatements, the estimated variance used for the evaluation can underestimate the true variance. So once again, we have these little, these few misstatements and it causes a problem. The projection resulting of the misstatements and the related confidence limits are not likely to be reliable under those conditions. Sampling unit, the sampling unit may be a customer account, an individual transaction, or a line item. For example, when auditing accounts receivable, the auditor may define the sample unit to be the customer's account balance or an individual sale invoice included in the account balance. The sample size determination, here's the formula for the sample size, noting that CC is the confidence coefficient, SD is going to be the estimated standard deviation. We're going to take the population times times the CC, confidence coefficient, times the SD, standard uh, estimated standard deviation, divided by the tolerable misstatement minus the estimated misstatement to the power of 2.